Hi folks, Jason here. Welcome to another video. In this series of videos, we're going to be looking at creating assets for video games. So in this um, instance, we're going to be creating a sort of mysterious mythical hammer, some kind of um, celestial weapon uh, used by kind of gods millions and millions of years ago, that kind of thing. And we're going to be doing this uh, by, uh, first of all, uh, doing a bit of sketching, and then also by looking at some references, and then we're going to be going into Maya and looking at um, uh, putting that eventually into 3D Coat, painting it, and then rendering it, and then putting it into Photoshop and putting some cool additional stuff on there. So as you can see here, we've got this uh, um, this hammer, we've got some flames coming from it, and uh, there's a bit of text as well. So it's just to kind of, again, it's just to give it some context, you know, whatever it is that you're going to be designing, you know, to put a bit of text in there, uh, just show, you know, perhaps or talk about you know, what its purposes are, um, you know, in the game, things like that. So that's pretty much it. So without further ado, let's get on and have a quick look at um, a general overview of what uh, we're going to be doing. So you can see here, we've got the design. This is the original inspiration for the design, but also there's some other um, assets as well. So at this point, I was kind of undecided about what I was going to choose to do as a tutorial. And I was toying with the idea of doing a book and then doing a kind of uh, this casket, even some rocks. And I decided on doing this kind of hammer. It's kind of it looked good. It was kind of satisfying. I thought it'd be like fun to do. So uh, so that's what I did. Then I sort of took it from this and I started doing some sketches in Photoshop. And basically, just sort of taking it apart, just maybe trying some different ways of, of sort of, uh, of sketching it. Um, looking at different shapes, looking at the handle of the hammer, just see if there's a way to adapt it. I ended up actually just going back to the original anyway, going back to um, this uh, original design, sort of giving it, you know, my own twist, but essentially kind of went went along with that. Now, as you'll see, I've got some other illustrations here that you can see of the uh, of the hammer. Now, these were actually taken from uh, the original OBJ that I created in uh, Maya. And the reason I've put them there in this format is, um, is to show you about a really cool feature in a program called Google SketchUp. Now, some of you out there may be familiar with this, and there may be some of you that are not. Google SketchUp is a free program um, uh, basically it's very kind of similar in some ways anyway to something like Maya you can create environments and um, it's got a bit of a different navigation and in fact let's just go through to it right now and just wait for it to open up and you can see there and you can see there that um, got uh, the original model that I uploaded. So this wasn't made in SketchUp, this was made in Maya. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Um, but basically when you go into SketchUp you're presented with a layout like this and you can do things like, just to give you an example, you know you can basically put objects in here and you can essentially create, um, if I just go to there, you can sort of create quite quick um, models. It's very good for sort of blocking things out. If you want to, you know, have a go at, you know, playing around with, um, you know, uh, making. And if you wanted to kind of block something out in, you know, for like concept art, but very very quickly, SketchUp's very very good for that. Just in terms of, you know, being able to uh, play on. But you know, certainly if you're not familiar with it. Um, I can do a video for you, but there are plenty of videos online you can also have a look at where you can kind of, um, yeah, play with some of these kind of features. But it is a very cool program, you know, it's definitely worth uh, investigating. So in this instance, anyway, I decided uh, I wanted to import, um, import my model into the program. And I'll just undo that just a second, just take a while out. 
and um, and explore its um, drawing function. So uh, Google SketchUp has this very cool function. If you go into, uh, I think it's in, is it in Window, Window and Styles, um, you've got some default views here of um, of whatever model that you're showing. Now you can see here, I'm in the default view with that. You can play around with some of these things depending on what you you know what you're going for you know transparent views look at it in wireframe you can also play around you know uh, different variety of things however it has a very very cool function if you go to um, sketchy edges it'll present you with different styles of drawing that you can apply to the model so for those of you out there who are perhaps not so confident with your drawing but you want to kind of at least have that kind of drawing um, sort of vibe, you know, when it comes to the initial, you know, designs. Now you could just do models, that's perfectly fine. But if you wanted to do something where you've got more like sketches, you know, like what uh, what I've done here, you know, where you where you can sort of lay things out on a page and just you know do a wash over it, even if it's just like you know values. This is a very very cool function. So. I just thought I'd show you this so you can go here and I'm not sure how many there are this looks to be probably around about 20 to 30 of these different things you may even indeed be able to um, download some plugins if I say just click on let's start from the top and say go to say something like this you see there it does this kind of almost like a marker pen uh, sort of effect or like a ink brush but the cool thing is it presents it still as a 3d object so you can zoom in scroll around you know you can see there and by all means you know download this program explore some of its functions um, it is very cool there is a multitude of things you can kind of do uh, with it um, and like I say it's um, if it's if you know if you're not so confident with uh, with your drawing um, it's just a very good, you know, alternative. Or even if you are confident with your drawing, you know, you could uh, you could still have a play around with it. So what I did in this instance was I um, I used one of the um, one of the different um, 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 finishes on there. I can't remember exactly which one it was. It might have been this one. And then I exported it. So I basically went to File and then uh, export export the 2d graphic and then you can export it as a png which is what i did so i saved a couple of these different types of views out and then uh, imported them into uh, maya as you can see there and then what i did was um, i don't really like sort of white background so i got this like old paper kind of background and what i did was i if i just click on the uh, one of the drawings now. I'll just move move this up a little bit there. And what you'll see there is I've got the layers already um, uh, uh, designated there. And what you can see there, it's not in the normal view. That's the normal view. What you do is once you kind of put something on there, like with a white background, you can make it transparent by going from normal into multiply, and it'll make it totally transparent. Which means you can sort of uh, put another layer underneath. And then just do a wash, you know, and you could do, you know, a multitude of different views of your same uh, drawing, so to speak. Um, and it's just very, very handy. So even if you, you know, whether you can draw or you're not so confident with your drawing, it's still a very cool thing to do, you know, just if you want to sort of see things in, in sketch form. So that was the initial stage with that. And then um, eventually I started modeling up the, uh, the hammer in uh, Maya and then taking it into 3D coat and, and and then eventually back into Photoshop so that's what we're going to be doing over the series of the videos folks so um, thanks for watching this video hope you find it uh, helpful and uh, I'm really excited about um, about these videos because I think you're going to be producing some really cool stuff at the end of this I'll be making all of my resources available to you by the way in a link uh, uh, below the video uh, but that's it for now, folks. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Welcome back, folks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we're going to design our asset in Maya. So you can see here, 
I've got the uh, the model that I um, created um, in Maya. We're going to create another one, but essentially it was fairly basic. It was just using a combination of uh, using a cube and cylinders and model those, extruded them, and uh, essentially combined all of these elements together, including these points and things like that. And then basically exported them into 3D code. So in order to kind of get going, the probably best thing to do is to start off by, I'll just move this to one side, uh, start off by creating your cube. There we go. And get it to a fair size. Now, again, you know, I'm not doing this. Um, I've, you can see there I've got the images on um, on the image plane. I'm going to be doing this fairly kind of freehand. So, and it's entirely up to you how you do it. If you wanted to do some designs, some drawings where you're working specifically from um, from your designs, then absolutely that's the way to go. You can use image planes for that. You can basically use front and side views and model it. Indeed, I may be doing videos in the future you know going through this and I've done previous videos as well with things like characters and things like that but um, in this instance it's really just an overview just going through it so I may speed up parts of this obviously you know this this video is intended for people who at least got um, you know some understanding of Maya some understanding of 3D Coat and some understanding of uh, Photoshop so if you're a complete beginner I would uh, suggest you perhaps look at some previous videos of Maya and 3D Coat and Photoshop in order to kind of get up to speed. So you can see here with the uh, with the hammer. Now it's got a bit of a sort of funny end to it. I'm going to just zoom in here. It's a kind of square with, with a kind of um, a sort of um, a sort of sloped sides and, and flat. And what I did was I mirrored this, so I just did it off one side and mirrored it, which is what we're going to do here. So my advice would be is using the multi-cut tool is is to create this shape first with the step and then mirror the rest so um, if you're not familiar with using the multi-cut tool it's basically it's this tool here and holding down shift you can essentially choose to subdivide it at uh, any point and create um, and create steps for that. So I'm just going to probably speed this up a little bit whilst I model the um, So as you can see, I've uh, created the first part of the model. Now I'm going to mirror it. So you can see there, I've got the first part done. The next I'm going to start working on creating the, um, the handle for it as well. So I'm going to be using a, a cylinder for that. And essentially, I'm going to make it as a separate object. I'm going to be using the extrude tools to basically um, move parts of the um, uh, the handle around. Uh, so basically, multi-cut tool and the extrude tool to basically create the shape. So again, I'll probably speed this part up, folks, and uh, see where we go from there. Folks, I had a bit of difficulty uh, for some reason. Um, what I did was I detached uh, part of this model that I've done so far and uh, separated it, essentially copied it. But when I was like trying to rotate, it was warping. And uh, I forgot it's because it's parented. So what you have to do is you have to hit Shift and P. That's Shift and P then go through to edit delete by type and history and that should fix it and then go back to um, um, uh, center pivot and you should be able to carry on 
Okay, folks, so that's the majority of it uh, done there. Now I'm just going to um, attach it to the hammer and combine. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I just realized I'd got the um, the little spikes there in the wrong position, so I'll just reposition them. Um, I've put the, um, the main pole against the hammer there. All I'm going to do now is just select the entire thing, go through to mesh and combine, and that's it. Now, in order to uh, export, just as a precaution, what I'm going to do is alongside that, I'm gonna to go to, through to mesh, and triangulate that will hopefully take care of any uh, loose ends in terms of geometry that doesn't match up you can also do things like uh, clean up as well in case there's anything kind of uh, untoward happening with the model but because we're going to be taking this into 3d coat it's going to voxelize it so it should buy rights uh, import okay so we will see so that's it for this video folks in the next video we're going to be exporting from Maya and going into 3d coat so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye for now hi folks and welcome back to part three in the series of videos so in this video, we're going to be looking to export our hammer into 3D Coat, where we're going to do a bit of sculpting. So essentially what we're going to be doing from here on in is um, um, some sculpting, some retopology, and some painting and some rendering, and finally getting into Photoshop. So without further ado, let's get going. So we've got our model from the previous video. Now what you'll need to do, I've already done this already, but you'll need to go to File and uh, Export Selection. Uh, you'll want to name your hammer, so you know, call it uh, Hammer 1, 2, 3 or 4. You see I've already sort of created uh, uh, one there. So give it a name. Once you've done that, go to Export Selection. Make sure you save it somewhere that you can, uh, you know, something like the desktop, something like that. And then once you've done that, you'll need to open up uh, 3D Coat. So we just go down to 3D Coat. And you'll be presented with, um, I'll just go into New again just so you can see that. So once you open up uh, the program, you'll want to go to Voxel Sculpting, click on the little folder symbol there and then go and find your file so you'll find your file there there's no bj by rights you should get a little read out there there we are you can see the uh, hammer in all of its glory click open and then we're going to basically bring the size up something around about a million yeah no it doesn't have to be exact but something around about there click apply click yes and then go and select one of the tools so we're going to be starting off by using build so I'm going to click on build and then you'll see it goes from being sort of translucent through to solid so that's all looking okay and just be sure to check for any little anything any sort of fragments or anything like that but that to me looks okay I'm going to go to the right here and uh, click on one of the shaders I'm going to go into this uh, rusted metal click on that and you can see there that's all looking pretty good now we are getting some of these uh, subdivisions which are kind of showing through now and that's not the effect that uh, that i'm looking for so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go through to the brushes i'm going to select one of these soft brushes and then what i'd like for you to do is on here holding down shift is to I'll just press escape a second i'll change the brush on that try that again hold down shift and basically start to smooth out can you see that it's, it's getting rid of those ridges so I'm going to speed this part of the video up but essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to iron out uh, all of these areas just to sort of smooth it over if it's not strong enough use the um, the right button mouse 
just to kind of raise it up a little bit and there you can see it increases the uh, the intensity of the smoothing so um, I'm going to speed the video up here folks just so we can kind of get it into some shape Okay, folks, so uh, that's all looking good so far. Got all that smoothed out. Now we need to move on to the uh, the hammer head itself. It's not looking um, that, you know, um, battle hardened, as it were. You know, this thing is potentially billions of years old. It's been using these celestial bat battles somewhere far away in some galaxy, uh, but it looks a little bit too clean. So what I'm going to do is going to use the build tool again. I'm going to use one of these uh, brushes, the kind of cracked brushes. And essentially, I'm going to work to, and this is where you're going to need to kind of just use a bit of nuance. Uh, I have a play around, holding down the uh, control button, and basically put some cracks in there. Now, it's perhaps a little bit strong. If I hold down control there, what I'm going to do is, I'm just with the right button mouse, just reduce that a little bit. So I'm just going to control Z these out. And let's just try that again. Might just take them down a little bit more. Okay, so once you've done that, folks, we're now going to start taking some chips out of the edges. Now you can do that by using probably something suitable like the scrape tool. And again, play around with the strength of this. But essentially, what we're going to do here is we're going to just click on there, it might make that a little bit more intense. Basically like it's had some kind of chips taken out of it. So if you go through to the side here, you can see it's kind of, it's created this kind of chipping kind of effect. So again, we're gonna work our way around uh, the, uh, the sides, on the sides there, for example, something like that. Maybe on the other side. Again, you can see there it's starting to look a lot more weathered. So again, I'm just going to speed this part of the video up, folks. Okay, folks, so that's looking uh, pretty good so far. We're kind of almost getting to the end of the sculpting side of it now regards to the handle you can do this one of two ways you can have a go at sort of basically sculpting in some kind of strap around the handle or if you wanted to you could leave that um, to the painting phase after we've re-apologized it but i'm just going to take a moment just to sort of sculpt into the uh, handle and maybe you know have the give give some kind of inference of a uh, of a sort of strap going all the way around so again i'm just going to speed this part of the video up folks Okay, so we've got the uh, handle pretty much done with the uh, the straps on there. They'll come in handy for when we come to do the painting. But that is pretty much it, folks, for the sculpting side of it. I'm going to bring this part of the, uh, um, the, the video to a close. In the next video, we're going to be looking at retopologizing and painting. So thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye for now. Welcome back folks. In this video we're going to be looking at re our hammer and then putting it into the paint shop and applying some additional painting effects on there. So without further ado, let's get going. So you'll see there from the previous video, we've got our hammer. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the auto topo tool. So basically what this will do is it allow us to um, to retopologize, it will be able to kind of concentrate on certain areas of the um, of the model. So to kind of concentrate the polygons uh, whilst leaving other polygons to not be uh, so concentrated around other areas. So 
let's just move my uh, picture up there so when it comes to retopologizing it's pretty simple to do we've got our hammer all looking good what we do is we right click on the actual hammer um, uh, layer we go to auto topo now you can do it through instant measures that's another method but because we've got uh, a concentration particularly around where it's got the spikes at the top um, I want to choose a certain amount of, um, of polygons and, and then concentrate that amount um, around the area so I'm going to select auto topo now at the moment it's set to about 10,000 now generally speaking it's, it's good practice to kind of try and keep your polygons down uh, to probably around about 4,000 in total like for you know for, for games so let's take this down let's try this out we're going to put this at say around about 4,000 you can actually type it in click OK on that and then what we're going to do is we're going to click OK let's give it a second right now this part what we're going to do is we're going to use it'll tell you at the top here you're going to paint uh, with this tool and this is how we're going to be able to kind of concentrate and get these clusters of polygons so obviously we don't need it to be too detailed around uh, these areas where we do need it concentrated where we do need it concentrated is um, around the spike area here so I'm just going to take this brush and you can see here it's sort of it's going like a sort of a, um, a sort of a quite a dark color now you can uh, put gradations so like you can ch uh, play around with the strength of this brush I'll just rotate it just so we can get a, a better view so you can take it down a little bit if you don't want it to be so phased and basically I do want it to be fairly kind of concentrated around here so I'm just going to raise up the color of that there like so and then for other areas you can take it down so for example around here it perhaps doesn't need to be as concentrated so I'll just probably make that a little bit more just gray and perhaps when it comes to around about the handle area again I might just take that down a little bit and just make this a bit more a bit less dark And just just round any areas where you think it might be uh, more beneficial now we could try it at that it, this might be a little bit of be a bit of trial and error with you so if it doesn't kind of work out you know initially you can maybe have another go at it um, you know try it again uh, you could delete what you've done and then sort of try it again or undo it so you see here we've got the um, the painting modulator later a set of, um, a sort of, um, a sort of default of um, of 2000 now you can raise this up I'm going to raise this up to around about 5000 and uh, then I'm going to click next and then click next again and then it should start doing its uh, calculation okay so it looks like it's uh, it's done what we wanted it to do we've got some um, potential issues here around uh, around the hammer now what we can do is though um, is we can have a look at um, doing some additional extrusion so any areas that will have uh, parts of the model showing through may come out as black it's not the end of the world but this is basically where um, the full bake won't work so what we can do is we can go to additional extrusion and basically just extrude it out what that means is it basically just covers any areas where it's not quite catching it it will cover those areas yeah now you can still do a little bit of manipulation with this but for the most part that's looking all right I think this should be okay we may end up with some little anomalies but I think that's pretty much all right now this won't be what you see this is essentially scanning the uh, the model yeah uh, so don't think that you know even though we've done this additional extrusion it's going to mean that it doesn't get uh, all the model but uh, let's have a look and see what this does 
They've got it all in there. It's got the handle in there and things like that. Let's see if this um, if this will do it. So the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to basically start putting in some seams, yeah, to to unwrap it. And this is where we come down to the uh, edge loops. You can see there, it basically uh, it offers areas that we can kind of cut. So for example, here, put a one, uh, put a little clip in there. You can see it changes color. So essentially, these are the areas. Now, if you want to kind of like uh, to make it a bit more unified, you can uh, use the uh, control key to click and basically isolate these areas. So let's try that again. I'm just going to undo these now. Now you can go down this route of um, of basically cutting your model up. There is another alternative, which is uh, auto map so basically that's leaving it to the program itself to do a calculation so we can have a look at that click on that there we are so basically it can save on a lot of time with this and if it kind of looks all right if the seams look okay then you can go with that so you know you can either do it manually or you can do it like that but that looks all right for the time being just for the purposes of the uh, of the tutorial once that's done you want to go through to bake, bake with normal map per pixel. You don't need to worry about the rest of this. It's just basically on a um, default setting and just click OK. Now with the uh, this next box, you've got here, um, um, a, a, you don't really need to kind of change a lot of this, but certainly th things like, um, depending on what program you're going to be putting it into, whether you're going to be putting it back into Maya, or Unreal Engine and things like that. It's just something to kind of bear in mind. Uh, if it's going to go into Unreal Engine, it's probably a good idea to put it into uh, Unreal Engine there. Um, I'm going to leave it out at Maya 2015, but it's just something to bear in mind. Then click uh, OK. Right, that looks like it's done the bake. Um, now, in order to kind of get like a proper view of it, I'm going to go back to Sculpt. So we've got our original there, and you can see there, if I hit W, you can see um, all the voxels there and things like that. Right, okay, so I'm going to click W again. So what I need to do is I'm just going to click on the I symbol there just to make it disappear. And then I'm going to go through to paint. So this is the moment of truth. We're going to have a look and see how it turned out. Okay. Looking pretty good, folks. Looking pretty good, right? So it looks like the original. However, if I hit W now, you'll see there we've got the um, the retopology. Yeah. So it's not a bad bake. Not a bad bake. It's got all the details in there that I wanted to get in there. And uh, I'm happy to go along with that. So hopefully yours has turned out that way. And then next it comes to the uh, to the painting. Now I'm going to leave the uh, the, the main hammer um, the same um, uh, the same color because that's that's what I wanted. I quite like that um, that effect on there. We can do some additional bits on there, but we'll come to that uh, in a minute. Um, what we want to do next is we want to create a layer. So again, you know, assuming that you're familiar with uh, with three D coat, what we're going to do here is I'm going to create another layer because we're going to basically um, paint into this handle uh, with our um, um, different material so you'll see here in the layer section we're going to add a new layer and I'm going to put this above the hammer yeah because the hammer is if I just click off that now you'll see there that's the baked um, shader that we've got on there and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting on top of that so we're going to need to put the handle on top of that yeah so it's always a good idea to uh, to rename so I'm going to call this handle and next we're going to choose our um, new material so if I just take my um, picture down there I'm going to go through to smart materials now here I'm going to select leather and you've got a few to, uh, to pick from. I'm just going to pick the top one there. Uh, by right, it should bring up a little box 
that we can have a look at. Let's give it a second. There we go. So if I just click and move that down to where the uh, where the handle is and zoom in. So this will give us a little readout of what um, what the handle uh, will look like with that leather effect on there. So it looks all right. You might want to change it. There are ways of changing this, by the way. You can you can play around with uh, the scale by using these tools here. So if you want to kind of increase or decrease um, the the textures and things like that, you can also do things like rotate as well if you wanted to kind of do that and uh, move it around so it's entirely up to you and there's a whole bunch of other settings you can you can play around with uh, on that you can of course also explore some of these other smart materials this for example is pretty cool just click ok on that just let it do a, it do its calculation okay so again, that looks uh, pretty cool. I might actually prefer to use this, but again, it's your call. And again, you can play around with these things in terms of looking at, you know, uh, the um, the size of the of the textures and things like that. You can increase it even to something like that. That's quite cool. And then if you zoom out, it'll give you a kind of a readout of what it would look like, what the finished thing will look like. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of other things you can play around with uh, with this, um, but I think I'm going to probably leave, leave it at that. And then basically what you can do is, if I just move that out of the way now, you can basically start painting on the top and you've got a number of brushes that you can use here. Uh, and again, just, you know, have a play around, uh, you know, have a play around with them and just see what they look like. I'm going to choose something like this. And again, if I just uh, pull out a little bit, there we go. Say something like that. And that's looking pretty much all right. You can also play around with things like thickness if you if you so wish. Um, I'm not necessarily going to get into it too much here, but if I just move this uh, down a little bit, you can play around with like you know the the settings there, so you can make it a little bit thicker if you like. Take that up to say 200. The best thing to do is just basically experiment. You know, just increase the texture and things like that. Um, other things you can do is you can play around with, you know, you can see there we've we've kind of lost a little bit of that nice shading. Um, if I just take the opacity of that layer down and just zoom in a little bit, we've got that nice kind of shading underneath uh, that we've kind of lost. Well, you know, you can sort of paint back into that again. Uh, you could either paint onto the um, onto the layer itself. Or create another um, another layer. And we could use a, um, a sort of another sort of a, one of the default brushes. Could be something like um, could be something like that. And again, obviously, we're not going to we're not going to use it at its full strength. So we could probably use something like one of the brushes there. I don't know, maybe one of these. And what we can do is we can take the opacity of this layer down. I might just use the nine and the zero key just to kind of get the angle. Oops, it's probably a little bit strong. And again, just to play around. So it's basically just to create you know, almost like a bit of residual um, dirt.
Uh, you could even add some highlights as well. So I could take a sample, say, of the brown color there, and maybe just uh, line it up a little bit. Take the slider, line that up a little bit. Gloss intensity. We don't need any gloss on that. So that's pretty much it, folks, uh, with that. If you want to do any additional um, work on here, you, for example, if you wanted to do some like a bit more like um, moisture on there, things like that, you can go through to the um, to the default um, uh, smart materials. You can actually create your own materials as well. So, for example, here there's one that I created. Uh, here water effect and if I just move this over just make sure also that these are unchecked as well when you when you're doing this make sure you haven't got, you still got you know that are all enabled and you can see here uh, I've got this uh, quite sort of glossy effect now um, it's not quite working at the moment because you do need to make some adjustments so for example if I just go to the layer blend you'll need to do some things like take the metalness uh, opacity out like so, turn that down to zero, and uh, also play around with things like the opacity as well. Take that down to, to zero. So you can see there now, you've got this kind of wet effect. So that could be like, you know, it could be like um, grease, you know, like a, a handle of a weapon might have like grease, you know, uh, from uh, from someone's hands or something like that. So you could, again, use this sparingly, but basically you could take something like this make sure that you get like a sort of a decent um a decent brush on there so something like that for example and you could just have a go at maybe just take the um probably take the depth down actually because we don't really need any we don't need a, a, a bump to that create a new layer so let's just go back to layers and we'll create a new layer and we'll call this water Make sure that the bump is t is uh, taken down. Uh, let's just go back to that sculpting layer again. Where are we? Take that down there and take the opacity down to zero. Yeah, let's just need to sort of take the um, the depth down on that as well, just so we don't have any depth. There we go, that's better. So yeah, take the depth down, go through to layer blending, take the metalness opacity down and take the uh, opacity down on that there and then when you go on to it you can see there we've got that water effect now if you do want to kind of put any depth on there you can do but I'd, I'd probably advise that you don't do that you know you don't need it for this instance I might cover some videos um, a little bit um, a little bit later in the series looking at you know um, uh, liquids and and how to kind of create liquids and thick liquids and things like that but uh, but for the meantime it's just really just more subtle yeah so you can kind of have that kind of subtle effect you can use the eraser tool as well if you wanted to for example just take away some of this um, some of this effect let's just go back into that there just so it's kind of broken up a little bit you don't want to go too overboard again just try and make it as subtle as you as you can ditto with the um the rest of the uh, hammer here if i just go back to this tool now you can see you know if you wanted to you could just add some little bits it just kind of gives it a little bit more um a little bit more uh, render and also when it comes to rendering it which we're going to be doing in the next video um it gives you a little bit of reflection as well so just something to bear in mind so again you can uh, you can have a play around uh, with this uh, to your heart's content uh, before you go into the next video and uh, but the only thing I would say is just try and be sparing with this try not to go too overboard with it again it just it's just an, a, a nice effect it gives it that element of kind of it's kind of like realism but it, you know it gives it some kind of gravity at least 
So anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Hopefully you found this useful. And in the next video, we're going to be covering uh, the rendering side of it and exporting into Photoshop. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now. Hi folks and welcome back. In this video we're going to be looking at rendering our finished model um, in 3D Coat's own renderer. We're going to be adding some lighting and then eventually exporting it into Photoshop. So you can see here we've got the finished article. It's all ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll over to where you can see uh, render which is next to sculpt. I'm going to click on that. There we are. And if I just move myself down there, you can see there we've got the uh, the rendered view of our uh, model. Now, you can see, uh, see in the right hand side here, we've got some render sections. Now we've got it set up that it's uh, on real time render. Now, uh, I would say keep it on that for the time being. When you kind of uh, rotate around, it does this kind of weird flickering. Uh, that's basically it's just starting to render um i would say just keep it on that it's just a lot sort of simpler but what we're going to do is before we get into rendering this out we're going to add some lighting effects now with the um original um uh, image that i showed you essentially what i was using is pink and blue lighting for this i think it was pink uh, underneath and uh, blue lighting above you can mess around with some of these other things as well, things like exposure, environment light, things like that. Um, what we really want to be doing, though, is adding lights. So I'm going to just move myself over here so it doesn't interfere with the uh, with the lighting there. And I'm going to go to uh, where it says Add Light. I'm going to click on that. You can see now it's got the light, and it's basically just arbitrarily popped it just somewhere to the kind of right. If you... Uh, hold your mouse over where it says rotation angle you sure if you move it back and forth you can see there it will move the light back and forth and you should be able to kind of see if I just move back and forth there you can see now you don't see the light but you can see the effects of the light so first of all have a play with that before you uh, before we go any further other things to think about are lift height uh, light height so it takes it off to a distance or it brings it back and it's fairly intense. Yeah. You can see it kind of goes below and then above and things like that. Uh, we've got the scattering as well. So that pretty much speaks for itself. You, have, you know, if you want it sort of fairly intense or if you want it um, fairly kind of smooth. So again, that's something to kind of uh, have a play around with. Camera target, we don't need to worry about that. And then we've got color. So, for example, as I mentioned before, I chose like a sort of pink color uh, initially for the one that I've done. So if I go there, then you can actually see the effects of it. Then if you play around with the rotation angle, you should by right be able to kind of see that movement or using switching between the height. So you can see there, now it's below. Yeah. As opposed to above which is there yeah now i chose on the original one which i'm going to go for again is i'm going to have it going from below so you kind of got this lighting kind of coming up uh, to kind of create this kind of ethereal kind of glow there and in terms of like the angle and stuff whatever as long as it's kind of like roughly underneath that's fine it's catching it a little bit at the side there which is quite nice and that's pretty much it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the intensity as well. So if you want to play around with the intensity, you can actually make it quite intense or take it down so it's quite low. So again, it's your call, whatever you want to go for, but try not to make it too hot. So that's all looking good. Uh, if you want to get like a, a view for the back, you can see that there. So it's catching all the rest of it underneath. So that's looking pretty good. We want to create another light now because I want this kind of cool light. So we've kind of got this warm pink light from underneath and then want a kind of cool light from below. So there, we just go to add light and then add another light. 
and then I'm going to change the color of this to more of a blue color you can see there click OK and again mess around with it um, I'm gonna just have a look at like say the angle you can see there because I want it pretty much coming from the top and then we're going to just have a look at the intensity of that there like so I might just have a quick look and just try and get another view on that so something like that now if you recall from the previous um, uh, image that I showed you at the beginning of these videos um, we've got it where we're kind of looking up at the um, up at the hammer so it, it kind of gives the the hammer some kind of personality if that's indeed possible but it gives it this like almost like um, grandiose and kind of um, you know epic kind of uh, look about it so we're going to just have a look at getting a similar angle like from below there like so and if you want you can just sort of zoom in just see but that's looking all right that's looking okay something like that you kind of got the pinks coming from below and again you can still play around with some of these you know like the intensity if you want to sort of take it down a little bit you can do or if you want to increase the intensity uh, coming from uh, above you can do and it, it can help to kind of accentuate some of the angles on them pick out some of these nice details you can see there um, at the side of the hammer once you've uh, got the lighting that you want you'll, you'll be ready to uh, export and that's what we're going to be coming to in the next video folks so um, so by all means have a play around in the next video we're going to be looking at exporting it as a PNG and then putting it into Photoshop and that's where we'll be concluding the video so that's it folks thanks for watching see you in the next video bye for now hi folks welcome back so in this video we're going to be looking to render our scene and also put it into Photoshop so you'll see here from the previous video we set the lighting up we've uh, got all the um, the angles right we've got the intensity right and we're ready to render now it's worth just taking a little bit of time just to look at uh, the settings for render so you'll see here on the right if I just click on the uh, render size now again have a play with this these are all default settings we've got uh, 1360 by 705 as a, a default render and uh, the rays so basically this is the kind of the, the pass through the, the the detail so to speak that you will get from your uh, model don't worry about the rest of it the rest of it is generally if, if you want to do like a sort of turntable um, uh, video of your model we're not doing this in, in that in this instance um, but you'll see here um, we're, we're on these settings now tell you what let's just uh, let's have a, a render of this at the current settings and we'll see what it looks like so I'm going to click OK I'm going to go to render I'm going to give it a name I'm going to call it hammer 2 again you can select anywhere you want whether it's in documents or, or desktop wherever you put it you'll be able to get access when you go to where it says show folder I'm going to click save and then it'll do a full screen render and you see there at the top it's going through the different rays and then it's done so that was at 2000 if you go into show folder and if I just move myself out of the way there and go through to where it says uh, where are we hammer 2 double click on that let's give it a second right so that looks fairly decent um, when it comes to close-ups though this is where it might suffer because if you're going to kind of keep the image at, at that but if I just zoom in you can see there it starts to get a little bit pixelated still looks fine but you know if you want to go into with some detail and this is where it pays just to take a bit more time and look at say um, uh, the settings in the renderer and maybe increase things so maybe look to increase it to say 2720 
maybe increase the um, the raise. You could take those up. You can make instead of um, two thousand, maybe take it up to say four thousand. Or there, you can actually key them in. So I would say put in four thousand. Oh, not four hundred, four thousand. And let's have a look at that. Click OK. And then go render. Give it a name. Call this Hammer 3. Hit enter. And this time you can see at the top there is going through the rays. So it's more and more detail that it's kind of it's baking in there. Yeah. So just give it so it'll take a little while longer now as it goes through a render. Now it should buy rights when we've uh, finish rendering this there should by rights be a lot more detail so there we go so that's finished doing what it's doing we'll go show in folder we'll go and find our hammer I have to uh, give myself nil points for uh, for spelling there so forgive me on that I'm going to double click there we are so now by right if we zoom in yeah it's a lot more detail yeah, it's not so pixelated, and it's picking up some subtleties as well with the um, with the lighting. Yeah, so that's a lot better uh, than it was before. And of course, you can use your own judgment on this. You know, um, if you want to, you know, go back into the settings and maybe you want to make it uh, a bit more. You know, you can, you've got a, um, a varying number of different. You know, you've got 480, you know, 5000. It goes all the way up to you know to um, you know, quite a high number and of course you can also increase the rays uh, so again this is an opportunity to have a play around just see what works and uh, and um, you know use your own judgment now I would say just for the purposes of doing this video something like uh, uh, you know perhaps that keep that figure as is but maybe just increase um, where are we Probably not as much as that. Maybe take it up to say something like, um, maybe even something like six thousand odd, roughly speaking. Yeah. Click OK. Now remember, it's rendering from that scene, so we can have that as the first one, which you'll have seen in the um, in the um, in the original Photoshop image. So we can render that out and do a render of that, and then we can choose like a close up. So it's showing more like the neck and the hammer, and then uh, then we can look to export them into uh, Photoshop. So I'm going to go to render. I'll call this. I'll try and spell this time. H a double m e r. I will call this. Uh, where are we? So what? Render three. Hammer three. There we are. Save. So there we are. So might take a little bit more time. I might just speed this part of the video up, folks, until uh, until it's done. Okay, and then we'll go for a little close up now. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit there, just so we can get a more detailed view. Maybe just change the angle slightly. Something like that. Let's have a look. Let's say something like that, and then we'll render this out again. So again, I may just speed this part up, folks. Call this Hammer 4. Save. So with that done, folks, we are now ready to um, go into Photoshop and import these images into there. So I'm just going to put this video on pause and bring up Photoshop. Hi folks and welcome back to the final video. So in this video we're going to be creating this scene now. Uh, we're essentially going to be uh, cutting out our renders, pasting them into uh, a new document and uh, we're going to just have a look at placing this flame effect onto the uh, onto the hammer and um, and again, you can uh, have a go at putting some text on there as well, and that will pretty much bring the video to a close. So you'll need to create a new document. So go to File, New, and make it something like A4, uh, something like that. You can keep it at a resolution of 300. I've already uh, created one, which we'll find over here. 
like so. And I've taken the liberty of just putting a gray background on there as well. You could create another layer, but essentially got that there. Now, we've got our uh, renders. So go and find your renders if you haven't got them already and uh, go and um, open them up in Photoshop. And essentially what you're going to need to do is, um, well, you could go a number of ways with this. You could either use the polygonal tool and basically cut around your object like so. This is one way to do it. So I could just very, very quickly just do that uh, for you. So you've got that like so. And then I could sort of copy that, go through to our new document, and then paste it in there like so. Now we do still have the issue of um, uh, the surrounding um, uh, surrounding background. Um, again, you could basically go around it again with the polygonal tool, or you could use the magic wand. Now this is where you'll kind of have to use a bit of uh, nuance and uh, uh, playing around, because you'll probably find that when it comes to the magic wand, you'll have it set at 32, which is usually the default. Um, and you could try and click around and do it that way. Now that may work for some of it, but you'll see on other parts of it, it will not work. Uh, it's a little bit too um, aggressive. So then you can have a play around basically by changing the tolerance, click off and then try that again. And then basically just take, keep taking the tolerance down. It's your call at the end of the day, whichever way you want to try and um, uh, try and have a play around. I'll just go Control D. Uh, we'll have another pl another play at that. You can see there, if you take it down to then a tolerance of 10, it's less aggressive, and then allows you to basically, um, if I just zoom in a little bit there, you can uh, basically go around. There's still some little bits there where you, you can see that it's it's eating into the um, uh, the image there. So maybe we could take it down to around about eight. Let's try that. I'll just press Control and uh, D. And let's try and do that again. So you can see there, it's it's getting a little bit. So again, you could sort of, you know, have a bit of a play around. You know, it's not an exact science. So you know, you want to, you know, um, use your judgment on this and uh, have a go at um, uh, deleting parts of it. So you can see there. Now, if I go around, you can start tidying it up. And I'll just zoom out a little bit there. You may you may find that it kind of catches parts of the uh, image but again you just need to you know take a bit of time you spent enough time on this already you know it won't harm just to sort of take a bit more time with probably more time than i'm taking at the moment i'm doing this simply for the purpose of doing this video but you know in in reality i'd probably you know um be a bit a bit more careful about you know you can, you can see here for example it's kind of it's taken out part of uh, the image there so i'll probably need to do a bit of repair work but again you know your call at the end of the day so i'm just going to take that bit out there so that's pretty much um pretty much it for that one folks and then basically it's like the same uh, same thing for the other hammer as well so if i we go through to the other hammer again you could just sort of take that and again just very very quickly again you can take your own time with this but just to go around and cut that out, copy it, and then put it into our little scene. Oops. Let's try that again. There we go. So we've got something like that. Scale it down. You position it. You zoom out a little bit like so it could be something that looks a bit like that perhaps or to that effect and then apply the same principles uh, as we did before basically just go around and we'll just delete oops just delete all the uh, surrounding background And again, you could sort of uh, perhaps just take, you know, uh, get a Wacom tablet and then just kind of have a, 
have a play around with the uh, eraser tool and just take those additional uh, parts out probably use like a hard brush now if you do find that you've got like um, a sort of a, a nasty edge uh, on the um, on the uh, images one of the things you can do is if I just uh, I'm just going to tidy this bit up here there we go one of the things you can do is you can duplicate your image there like so and on one underneath you can go to filter blur and Gaussian blur and what it can do is it can basically you can see there it can add a, a little it's actually quite nice a little bit of a sort of glow to it it doesn't have to be that intense you can maybe just take it down and then start again like so but it's a it's a nice way of just adding a bit more of an ethereal um, uh, edge to it I quite like that before so I might just go for that not so much as that but maybe something like that just to give it that otherworldly uh, kind of view I'm just gonna click OK on that and then do the same with the other layer and then because we use the same setting on the other one we'll do it with this one as well so you can see there at the top there we are and all that really leaves folks is for if you just go back to uh, to the original one is just to put the effect on and put the text on now um, for the fire effect I've uh, got uh, uh, um, a PNG here that I just got offline it was just a free bit of imagery and it's just kind of um, yeah kind of ethereal looking uh, flames and what you can do is you can copy this so if I just go to control C and then I'll go to our I just move my little image out of the way there and go back through to it and paste that in there now it doesn't look too impressive at the moment uh, you know as it stands it's 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 not a lot to do there however you can if you for example if you just um, hold down say shift and just start to kind of warp it and again you can take your time with this you know I'm doing this doing this for the video of course you know but you can have a play around yourself and use the things like the warp as well you can play around with that and just kind of do all that kind of thing but the cool thing with this is is if I go through to the layer and go through to um, where it says normal you can then take it down to um, there's a little setting called if I can find it divide there we are and it's very cool because with divide you can sort of have this um, translucent effect but also it kind of adds to it as well so if I go uh, click on that there and again you can sort of continue playing around with it that way but it gives it this very very nice um, like I say kind of like ethereal um, um, sort of fire effect and again you can kind of warp around it like so and add a bit there now what you can do with this next and you'll see what I did with the um, on here if I just zoom in a bit is essentially what it was I kind of use the smudge tool so I've got that on a separate layer use the smudge tool and basically just played around just sort of uh, played around use the smudge tool painted on top so if I just go back to the thing here so using the smudge tool again get like a, a, a decent brush on it it could be something like um, probably one of the um, um, the natural brushes if I can find it if it'll let me one of the legacy brushes in particular and something like I think I saw it there yeah something like brush 14 and I'll just apply 
some dynamic dynamics to that. Then add a bit of scatter. There we are. And then if I just take that. So that's that's with the smudge effect and you know ramp it up a little bit. And you can start to do some pretty cool stuff. Now, if you're finding that you're getting a bit of lag going on with the um you know with it, you know, what you can do, of course, is you can just start to um um you know perhaps reduce the size of the image because at the moment it's quite high it's around about uh, 300 pixels so maybe you could sort of take it down to say 200 for example like so so then when it comes back to doing it you're not going to get too much kind of smudge and you've got a bit more control but the cool thing with this is, you know, you can do, I'll just take that down a little bit. You can paint with, with the photo that's there already, and you can sample it as well. So you could take that, for example, you know, and begin to kind of smear it over the top, say. And you could also sample these colors, so sample that sort of pinkish color, and then begin to paint over the top. But because we've got it in this divide, uh, it'll give you this kind of like um, um, sort of turquoise kind of transparent kind of color which is quite nice if you just go back to the original one that I did you can see that there with these um, uh, these blue kind of uh, turquoise flames uh, you can do the same thing there so that's like a happy little accident I didn't originally didn't really intend on on having that happen until it until it happened I thought oh, that's quite cool so again you know it's just uh, use your own judgment Again, play around, uh, play around with that. Create this kind of flame effect, um, uh, like uh, I'm doing here. Let's move this off down there, and play around with the strength of the brush. And then once you've kind of got that, uh, obviously you know, taking a bit more time on it. But once you've kind of got that uh, desired effect that you want, you'll be then ready to, uh, you know, perhaps even take that and transfer it over to um, uh, onto the other one. So I could duplicate that layer, so, you know. So once you've finished doing all the nice kind of rendering, you could duplicate that. Oh dear, that's quite intense. Uh, use that and then take that over to your other uh, hammer there. And basically just do the same thing you could even you know change the shape of it if you like you know warp around with it you know do whatever it is do as you see fit something like that and then the last thing to do is just doing the text and the text you should if you know photoshop you should know how to do that you can put the put some text on there call it the holy hammer And you know, put some text on there and, and do all that fun stuff. I might just change the text on that actually, just uh, that wasn't the original one that I had. But, um, but yeah, that's that for all intents and purposes, folks. That's pretty much it, really. Um, hopefully, you found um, the video um, helpful and the rest of the videos as well. Uh, hopefully it's given you some ideas about what you can create, um, you know, using uh, Maya, using uh, 3D Coat, um, using Photoshop even, uh, just to create some really cool designs. And again, just going back through the videos, you know, uh, looking at different methods you could use uh, in Maya, also in things like Google SketchUp as well, and all those kind of drawn effects, you know, using, um, you know, using you know implementing some of those effects that you can see in if I just go through to um, not that one there uh, yeah through to my initial uh, designs uh, you can just create some really cool things so um, that's pretty much it really so um, 
yeah thanks for watching folks hope you found these videos useful and um good luck with the uh with the project and uh i look forward to seeing you in the next video that's it folks bye for now